to begin, we're just first going to ask a really general question, which is what is nutrition? Um, the definition according to the Council on Food and Nutrition of the American Medical Association is that nutrition is the science of food, the nutrients and the substances therein, their action, their interaction, and balance in relation to both health and disease, and the process by which organisms ingest, absorb, transport, utilize, and excrete food substances. So there's really a lot going on in that definition, but it does give us some insights into the lenses and perspectives that we are going to be exploring as we go through each macronutrient over the course of the semester, and also look at how these macronutrients interact with each other and with a dietary pattern overall. So building on that, our next natural question is what are nutrients? And so nutrients are the substances that the body uses for growth, maintenance, and repair of tissues. Um, the general functions of nutrients are to provide the raw materials, you know, the raw materials that we need in order to build and maintain the body. Keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of, you know, wear and tear on our body as we go through life, so we need to both build new tissue as well as repair and maintain our current tissue. Um, our nutrients are going to help regulate key metabolic reactions. So one way to think about this is that we could have nutrients that are going to be regulating whether we're going to be in a catabolic state where we're breaking down compounds and nutrients in order to get energy or whether we're, uh, we'll have other nutrients that are going to regulate metabolic reactions to tell us to be in an anabolic state or to be building tissue. And then finally, nutrients also will be participating in metabolic reactions that provide energy to sustain life. Another way to say that is that many of the, the nutrients we're focusing on this course, the macronutrients, we can break those down in order to get energy. Those macronutrients can go through catabolic reactions to be broken down to yield energy that our body can use in many different ways. So let's look over some of the classes of nutrients. I have listed them here, carbohydrates, fats, protein, water, vitamins, minerals, and then I've put phytonutrients in italics just to indicate that they aren't necessary for life, but they can be beneficial for health. In our course, we are going to be focused on the macronutrients, of course. Macro is here is referring to large, and in this case, we mean large because we're going to consume these nutrients in large quantities, large quantities being tens to hundreds of grams per day. The other characteristic about these macronutrients is that they provide energy. So these are energy yielding nutrients that we can break down in order to generate energy that we can use in our body. These other categories of uh, nutrients down here, the vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients, these are nutrients that um, we consume in much smaller quantities. So that's what micro is referring to here. Micro quantities, so that's gonna be in single numbers of grams to milligrams or micrograms per day. Let's have another kind of baseline definition of what are essential nutrients. So essential nutrients are nutrients that have to be provided exogenously from the diet. We have to eat them from our food. And the reason that we have to eat them from our food is because either the body cannot make them at all, or because the body can't make sufficient amounts to meet our needs. So some examples um, of essential nutrients, if we first start looking at protein, um, there are 20 different am amino acids that are used to make protein. Nine of those 20 amino acids are essential because our body either cannot make them at all or can't make sufficient amounts to meet our needs. Um, there are also some fats that are considered essential nutrients. So I've given two, um, two essential fats here. Uh, they are both polyunsaturated fats. And the reason that these, are um, that these are essential is because humans don't have the enzymes that are necessary to put double bonds in the right places to make these particular polyunsaturated fatty acids. So one of them is the omega-3 fatty acid alpha linolenic acid. Um, and then another example of a essential fatty acid is an omega-6 linoleic acid. And then of course all the vitamins and minerals are also essential because our bodies cannot make them itself. So now that we know what an essential nutrient is, the next question is how do we determine which nutrients are essential? So there's a few criteria. In order for a nutrient to be considered essential, a nutrient must lead to poor health if it is omitted, 
It must restore health if it's added back in, and it also must be responsible for a specific biological function. So let's, let's take an example of a, an essential macronutrient. Let's go back to looking at omega-3, this omega-3 fat alpha linoleic, uh, linolenic acid. When you are deficient in alpha linolenic acid, um, there will be symptoms of extreme fatigue, poor memory, dry skin, and heart problems. And if you are an infant, there will be problems with vision and nerve problems. Now, the reason for that is because this alpha linolenic acid is a critical component of cell membranes. Um, it also is a precursor to make other really important omega-3 fatty acids, icosapentaenoic acid, or EPA, as well as docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA. And further, al uh, alpha linolenic acid is a precursor for some very important anti-inflammatory signaling pathways. So it's important in maintaining that balance of inflammation in our body. So if you're deficient in alpha linoleic acid, then you're going to have these, these symptoms. And then if when you consume alpha, lino, alpha linolenic acid, then those symptoms will go away. Now, we have talked about how macronutrients are energy yielding, but what do we use that energy for? There are three main categories that our body uses energy for. The first is mechanical work, so actual movement. We can think about muscular movement. We use energy in order to contract our muscles. Um, we use energy in order to, for the muscle contractions that cause our heart to pump or our diaphragm, diaphragm to contract so that we can breathe. So, so there's some very mechanical work that energy is used for. There's also a lot of transport work. Um, something that we will talk about during this course is the critical importance of ion gradients, different concentrations of ions inside our cell versus outside of our cell. Um, and it is very expensive from the energy perspective to maintain those different gradients of ions between inside the cell and outside of the cell. Um, so that's very expensive for us to do. However, maintaining those different concentration gradients of ions is absolutely critical in order for our neurons to be able to send uh, signals to each other. So for nerve transmission, we heavily rely on these different concentration gradients. Um, we also rely on these concentration gradients in order to absorb nutrients from our intestine across our cells into our bloodstream. So um, the uh, we require energy in order to generate these concentration gradients. So it's a really major energy investment that then we will use that uh, those concentration gradients in order to perform functions in our body like nerve transmission and nutrient absorption. And then finally, the third type, uh, third way that we will use energy in our body is for synthetic work to actually build things, to build structures, build new compounds. For example, building a new protein requires energy. When we're building a new cell, that requires energy. When we're building more, you know, tissues, that requires energy. So here are some examples. Um, we are constantly shedding the uh, the enterocyte lining of our intestines. So that's the the lining of the cells um, in our uh, the epithelial layer of our intestine that's involved in actually absorbing nutrients. The, those enterocytes, they have a lifespan of about three to five days. So that means that we are constantly shedding enterocytes and we constantly have to be building new cells. Very expensive. There are lots of energy involved there. Same thing with red blood cells. Red blood cells have a lifespan of about 120 days. So we have to be constantly building more red blood cells in order to maintain um, the appropriate amount of red blood cells that we need to transport oxygen around our body. So those are all some examples of how we use uh, energy to perform synthetic or building work in our body.